I'm stunting on you stylishly. Am I going out or am I going to bed? You don't know and you never will, sis. Hi everyone, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up? home skillet biscuit and happy saturday for those of you that are new around here saturday it's the day i do something called bad movies and a beat the series on my channel where i talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on last week we talked about what do we talk about? cats i just wanted that to not be in my memory anymore i must have just blocked it out as bad as people think it is it is actually worse it is it yeah so if you missed that one and would like to check it out that'll be linked up above or you can check it out in the bad movies in a beat playlist. Ooh, this week I got, <laughs> I got a special one for you this week. It's mm-hmm. So ever since I started doing bad movies in a beat, you guys have been more than ready, more than willing to send me <laughs> a bunch of bad movie recommendations over various social media platforms. Thank you, I really appreciate that. I will never run out of content because there's just so much out there. And today's video was actually one recommended on Twitter. Shout outs to Twitter because the Twitter fam keeps Keeps me very entertained. <laughs> and I was added in a tweet that had an attached picture of the description of this movie called Hot Gimmick Girl Meets Boy. A quiet teen's life is shaken up when she's forced to be her arrogant neighbor's slave. He loves her. <laughs> <laughs> but they both have a lot to learn about trust. Can I just say right now that that description doesn't encapsulate how awful and how nonsensical this movie actually is. And that description is a lot. So that's saying, <laughs> that's saying a lot, isn't it? And there are just certain movies that just go into my mental Rolodex. I'm like, yeah, I really need to get around to that one. And I wasn't even planning on doing this video for this week. I had a completely different movie planned. I did just end up watching the first minute or so. And I was like, well, <laughs> what are we got to do over here? This, this, is, this is remarkable. This is trash in a way that only Japan can do. It is so confusing and so engrossingly stupid <laughs> that like, I like hate love it, love hate it. It's awful. <laughs> I feel like those of you that have seen the movie, because again, I have a habit of live tweeting when I'm watching a movie. So quite a few of you actually watched it like soon thereafter and y'all were just tweeting me confusion. <laughs> they were like, what was that? <laughs> what was that? I know, it's this, here we are, let's go. And if you've never heard of this movie and you've never seen anything related to this movie, I gotta say, I highly recommend you watch it because it's just down downright entertainingly stupid. So Hot Gimmick is actually uh, a manga from I believe early 2000s that centers around the core uh, concept of her becoming her neighbors or her bully to be honest, her bully slave. This movie is basically what five years of making a chapter by chapter manga, if you try to put all five years in a two hour time frame and then didn't even try to make it make sense at any point. That's hot gimmick, girl meets boy the movie. <laughs> it is a girl. This movie is a hot, confusing, boiling mess. It's super incoherent, super inconsistent. I hate literally everyone in this movie. <laughs> They're all horrible. Our main female protagonist is Hatsumi. Hatsumi is a 16 year old high school student and the movie starts off with Hatsumi going to get a pregnancy test for her little sister. Her little sister is just like way too chipper about like life right now as if she couldn't possibly be pregnant. And she's kind of like lighthearted and like, yeah, we're on a mission to find out if I'm pregnant. <laughs> Granted, I guess it could be a coping mechanism, but instead of discussing that, they talk more about their childhood friend, Carrot Top. I don't know what his real name is, but that's about to be his name in this video. Who moved away and became a famous model. Never mind. Little sister is actually mad. We don't know what triggered it. It kind of happened out of nowhere, but nothing in this movie makes sense. With this awkward gesture, somehow through the pregnancy test over a bridge that just so happens to be caught by this guy, the greasy guy with the incel haircut. So get this, he is actually our main character. 
right? This is our main guy and apparently supposed to be our heartthrob. His name is Ryoki. Ryoki is a bitch. I said I hate everyone in this movie. He's definitely probably the person I hate the most. I don't know, they're all competing for that top spot. Pretty consistently awful through this entire movie, so I guess he's getting that number one spot by the skin of his teeth. I think the thing that's most hilarious about this entire movie is that it's very evident that the person that directed it put so many scenes in just because they would look cool. Like they would look cool and probably be pretty impactful as a singular scene if they were like a short film and we don't have all this other like storyline enveloping around it or lack thereof enveloping around it. But when you put them in a movie for two hours, it's just like, what the hell am I watching? Who edited this? The whole movie is literally one of the most difficult films to watch without pausing all the time and not just because it's a foreign film and I don't speak Japanese so I gotta read read subtitles. The frames go so fast and it's so disorienting and so confusing that I feel like even if you spoke Japanese it would still be very very disorienting and confusing but having the added element to read subtext also doesn't help. So Hatsumi's sister gets her period, yay. Hatsumi ends up running into the dude with the incel haircut. What's his name? Doki. I'm trying to figure out how to put this lightly. Um, Doki's a dick. Just so mean and misogynistic and entitled. Like he's supposed to be like the smartest kid in school because aren't they all, <laughs> right? Every Japanese like shoujo or slice of life school life thing is always one kid that is the smartest kid in Japan. Like there's so many of them at the same time. Wouldn't it just be one person? But yeah, he like comes up to her, calls her a slut and threatens to tell other people that she's a th slut because he found her the pregnancy test and he thinks it's hers. But in an effort to stop him from telling everyone about the pregnancy test, she says that she'll do anything. <laughs> Sorry. It is knee jerk reaction without thinking about it really at all was, all right, you gonna be my slave. <laughs> what? You always wanted a what? Girl, we are six minutes into the movie. <laughs> Think about it. There's an hour and 54 minutes left. We are six minutes into the movie and we wild. Like he's blackmailing her. He's straight up saying, I'm gonna tell everybody. I'm gonna tell everybody you a little hoe. And the thing that pissed me off so much beyond the obvious about this about the scene is that they play it with that freaking cutesy ass music the little plant piano like dun, 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 dun. doll piano caramel macchiato ass piano music i hate it yeah it's bad but like if we put enough music that's lighthearted enough no one's gonna take it that seriously he's blackmailing her lighthearted siren track behind it to make it seem like that's not what's happening no, no, just in the nick of time comes model friend the dude they were talking about earlier in not that much earlier again we're only like seven minutes <laughs> slightly earlier in the movie. And so this dude is Hatsumi's childhood crush. He used to live in the complex with um, his family and he decided to recently move back in with his dad who still lives in the complex. He's come back to live amongst the common folk. And over the next few scenes, Carrot Top starts laying it on pretty thick. He's like, I want her. She gonna be my girl. And like around this time is when I noticed that's an old ass 17 year old. <laughs> I'm rooting hot 25 year old teenager. Of course, they're always interrupted by this dude. I ain't never gonna stop hating this bitch. And he's like, carry my stuff, you mule. <laughs> It's not funny. And she's like, okay, I guess I'm gonna carry his stuff. So she carries his stuff. She is so awful. Like she has no backbone. And this is like a big thing in a lot of Asian dramas and media that I've consumed over the years. Like they never have, they don't never, but a lot of times 
romanticization of the woman having literally no backbone like when people do her wrong she has to apologize when people cheat her like crap she's endearing and cute like put some bass in your voice and lift your head up i'm tired of seeing your bangs i know what your scalp look like more than your face like i said in romance this is kind of a trope anyway like the girl kind of getting treated like crap <laughs> honestly and how that's supposed to be cute but like again japan's not big on subtlety i've noticed and they'll just be like it's not alluded to it's more like here hold my bags you whore <laughs> like that's it infuriating no confidence no self-worth meek indecisive like that's her thing they make that as her thing she never knows what god am i what god am i anyway ever so subtly he's mad that she was out with another dude and he's like you're my property <laughs> like not even subtle he's like i own you <laughs> yeah he goes on and on about how stupid she is and how easily swayed by a man she is while wow, that annoying ass cutesy music plays <laughs> Also, how do I put this? Not that it's okay if anyone does it, but he looked dirty. <laughs> Again, it's not it's not okay if anyone's talking to you like this, but it's certainly not okay for some ugly dude to do it. You got me messed up. You think I'm gonna let a ugly like no one. <laughs> But you think I'm gonna let an ugly dude talk to me like that? Absolutely not. Boy, if you don't get your Swiffer mop, my, my Chemical Romance cover band ass out of my face. Like he is not cute and he walk like the goth kids from South Park. It's like, I can't. Anyway, she does kiss him because I guess she felt like she was being blackmailed. So I do get that. And I just need to know who gave an incel like a blank sheet and said, go nuts fam. What's your fantasy? <laughs> this part shouldn't have made me laugh as much as it did. But the next thing is the title screen. <laughs> Yo, we're 17 minutes into the movie. We've had, <laughs> hold up. We've had a pregnant little sister find out she's not pregnant. We've met like three different dudes that at some point will be her love interest. She's become a slave. The movie is very well underway. Also, that's a lot to happen in 17 minutes, right? But still, the movie's still very underway and it just, I don't know. Did y'all forget? It's like all this stuff has happened. Oh, by the way, this is <laughs> this is hot Kimmy Grimey's play. Remember when I said that I felt like this movie was a bunch of just scenes that the director thought sounded like it would look cool, just sewn together. So the next few scenes is a bunch of that. But I mean, I mean the whole movie is. But the next few scenes in particular are, are a bunch of that. This scene happens where Carrot Top and Hatsumi are talking. I just really don't understand like the visual choices that were made in this film because they do this like weird split screen thing. To be honest with you, I don't even remember what they were talking about because this scene, the way it looked was so distracting to me because the color would change where someone's facing this way, someone's facing that way, but they would move at different times because there were two different takes. Honestly, I feel like this whole movie was edited by like a middle schooler who just found some new filters on Instagram or something. You're like, that sounds like it would be cool. But the whole movie does a bunch of like editing choices that you think are supposed to be like representative of something or to tell some form of story or have some form of rel relevance, but they don't, they're just in there. Which makes this already very difficult at times to understand film even more difficult to understand. Ooh, and then this scene happens. Okay, so Incel is walking with his other fellow misogynists and they run into Hatsumi and then he's like, hang out with them you whore like and he like pushes her into this group of random dudes and they're like all around her like oh let me be a creepy rapey dude then he kind of like aggressively takes her away from the dudes that he threw her into as if it's supposed to be like he's saving her 
And then in a way that's very representative of this movie because it makes no sense and it goes from one subject to the next so quickly, somehow he gets to like, I'm gonna make you my girlfriend you're not gonna be my slave anymore you're gonna be my girlfriend then soon thereafter there's this weird ass kiss scene with the carrot top dude also at some point during this kiss he brings up like his parents divorce and how his mom cheated on his dad like while he's trying to kiss her <laughs> i'm to find out it's kind of a way to allude to a later storyline but it's just added in their sloppy af <laughs> Anyway, Carrot Top invites her to a party where he roofies her, right? It escalated quickly. I know, I, <laughs> I was as confused as you are. And before he can sexually assault her, her brother ends up saving her from this party. I don't know why he knew this party was happening, why he just happened to be there. Nothing makes sense. Why am I trying to make this make sense? Speaking of her brother, I haven't really addressed the brother yet. Throughout the movie, uh, there's a lot of uncomfortable sexual tension from him towards Hatsumi. And um, I was just hoping that we wasn't gonna get no incest. I just, I don't wanna watch no incest. It's Japan, I would not put it past. <laughs> Not saying that every Japanese manga has incest, but I'm just saying I've been blindsided before Vampire Night. Just saying. Apparently he is, as we'll find out later, he's actually adopted. He's not her blood brother. He's adopted. He was adopted before she was born and he is in love with her. It's creepy regardless if they were related or not related because you've seen someone grow up their entire life. It's just something icky about that. But then also it's just my Western sensibilities perhaps, but like she's 16. This whole thing had me looking into like uh, age of consent in Japan. Apparently did not know this. It's 13. So technically not illegal, but still icky. But anyway, yeah, for the first like big chunk of the movie, you don't know that they're not related. So there's this weird kind of like, why are you staring at her like that? <laughs> and I still say stop staring at her like that. It's still weird and kind of gross, but yeah. But it's not incest. So we hit the bare minimum, it's not incest. Anyway, after the party, she gets home and Carrot Top calls her and he ends up FaceTiming her and convincing her like get naked for him in a video. Again, another situation in which this movie, if this scene were taken and made into like a better movie, um, it was actually very eff effective in making me feel incredibly uncomfortable in a way that I think was the point. Like she's super innocent and she's bearing her all to him and it's very awkward and uncomfortable to watch um, and intimate to watch, especially knowing as we do as the audience that he's literal garbage. Like if it were in a better movie, it would have been more effective as a scene. But the next day, the video that she had taken for him is sent to her brother? Well, her non-brother, her not brother, but still, ew. And come to find out his motive is because he is out for vengeance. Carrot Top is out for vengeance. Hatsumi's dad is the reason why his family, Carrot Top's family, has broken up. His mother had an affair with her father and he just wants to hurt her for some reason. I don't know what that has to do with her, but okay. He's vengeful, he hates their entire family, so he went for her. Oh, of course, Incel is back because he has to defend her honor. Like, as awful as he is, the only thing that he does right is that he tells her to stop apologizing because because Carrot Top is so hurt, she feels like she needs to apologize to him as if she's done something wrong. And he's like, shut the hell up, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Stop apologizing. <laughs> Again, another situation where they're just throwing scenes together. What? Skipping ahead, Hatsumi finds out that her brother isn't really her brother and that he's adopted. Oh, and then this scene, this scene makes no freaking sense because, <laughs> should I even talk about it? Cause it's like really out of nowhere, but quick spark notes version. Hatsumi's brother is moving out because he can't be near her. She's like, he's too 
in love with her and being near her is painful. So he's gonna move out and he ends up moving in with this long hair dude. And as he's like moving out, this scene happens. Again, another situation where y'all just added scenes in because it sounded cool. Um, and it would be a quick way to get them BL girls <laughs> into this. It was so it was so erotic for no reason. I was like, okay, is he is is he gonna start dating a man? No. I don't think this this roommate even comes up again. <laughs> Hatsumi and non brother get caught in an elevator and they kiss, right? And if I'm not mistaken, right, he doesn't know that she knows that they're not related. So, as far as he knows, she thinks that he's her brother and he still goes for it. <laughs> oh, God. So, Incel finds out that his dad is the one that broke up Carrot Top's family and he's like super distraught about that. And of course, as everyone knows, sex solves all of your problems. So he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go smash old girl. He has a condom and he like dramatically throws it away. And she's like, he threw it. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. I'm sorry, there's just little things about this movie that crack me up. My reading comprehension is not where it's supposed to be, because I did not just read this dude say, I'm trying to get you pregs, man, so that you have to live with me forever. But before that can happen, he ends up telling her that his dad is who broke up Carrot Top's family. And I don't know why this is relevant, but <laughs> that like breaks up their relationship. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why this is important. I don't know why this is relevant at all. After she learns this fact, she starts crying about some <laughs> that has nothing to do with what she's like, I wanted you to be the first person to see me naked, which is not true. <laughs> she says that as if we haven't seen the rest of the movie where she wanted the other dude to see her naked. Cause that's why she got naked. She's like, you're the only one I wanted to see me naked. And then she like dramatically runs out in slow motion and he's crying and I don't understand. <laughs> this movie is a dumpster fire. Like it makes no sense at all. And I'm kind of living. Anyway, after this, she's so distraught. So she goes over to non brother brother's house and she ends up staying with him for a bit. And that's where my favorite scene happens. Cause she, Girl, ooh, she runs away. She goes to his house and she's there and basically tries to like say, have sex with me. Someone please make a gif out of this. Dead. I need attention. I need belly rubs. Someone feed me. Ew, what the fuck? And then after that, she ends up back with Incel. I don't know either, guys. She just ends up back with him. Then we have possibly one of the most incoherent scenes I've ever seen in my life in anything. You know what? I was, I was about to sit here and try to explain what this is, but I don't I don't think words can express how disorienting the scene is. So, so even at the risk of being bent over the proverbial knee of daddy demonetization, I want to put as much of this scene as I can without editing as I as possible. <laughs> お前の物になれよ。私の顔も私の声も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の手も私の
かんなかったでも今のみおきくんに会っちゃうからだね私はスーパーラッキーガールだったよね今すぐしようか空っぽでもいいことってあったんだね今この気持ちを大切にしたい What the hell was that? What was that? What was that? I feel like I just got whiplash. I don't know what the hell that was. Anyway, they kiss and decide to be together. He at no point stops being an asshole and she at no point stops being an idiot. They sew up some loose ends. The credits roll. <laughs> you know, part of me wants to sit here on my high horse and act like I don't know how anyone could ever be so silly as to find a movie like this. Aspirational as far as like a relationship, like who would ever be so silly? But then I remember that I had hella toxic fantasies about a lot of things as a high schooler, so I just need to put my little PSA if you find this romantic in any way, regardless of your age, don't. Yeah, this movie is horrible. With that said, I still want people to watch it because, again, there's a lot that I had to cut out for the sake of this video and you know, for the length of this video and overall just continuity. There are very few experiences that are quite like hot gimmick. Girl meets boy. So I highly recommend if you have Netflix to give it a watch. Watch it with some friends. It will be a hoot. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KennyJD. If you have any other movies to be recommended for bad movies in a beat, be sure to send them in my comment section and I will see you guys next time. I'm just gonna say I hope my makeup looks nice. I don't know because my contacts are mad dry, so I can't really see right now. I hope I'm serving face though.